Hello, everybody. This is Mian Qin from Texas A&M University. I'll talk about our work, KV Rate, a high-performance, write-efficient, update-friendly racial coding scheme for KV SSDs. This work is in collaborate with Samsung. Uh, this is a high-level summary of our work. Um, the problem is uh, the emerging key value interface storage um, raised the problem of how to efficiently manage erasure codes for redundancy. Uh, the key value device can accept uh, arbitrary key and value size, which is fundamentally different from a traditional block device, which operates on a continuous logical block address and fixed size blocks. So it makes uh, key value device difficult to manage erasure codes directly since erasure, erasure codes are block based. So the goal of this work is to provide an efficient uh, erasure coding management scheme on the key value device. And we focus on grouping multiple mid size records into a single erasure code uh, group or uh, a stripe. The key ideas of this work is to um, remap the logical keys to physical keys and use that to uh, keep the erasure code group membership tracking. And we also use out of place updates to reduce the write amplifications and IO amplifications for update operation. Um, here is an investigation conducted by IDC and EMC uh, about worldwide data volume growth from the 80s to 2025. Um, there are two ob observations. Um, first, the data volume is growing exponentially. And more importantly, unstructured uh, data such as pictures, audios, videos are dominating the overall data volume. Uh, besides, data re reliability is also um, always a big uh, concern, especially with new flash technology advancing, uh, moving from a single layer flash to multiple layer. And uh, we have fast paced software development and, and some other issues which can cause the data loss. Uh, so first, to handle this massive volume of unstructured data, key value stores uh, are extremely popular, especially in large scale systems such as uh, Amazon Datum or Google Big Table, Facebook has uh, its own infrastructure. Uh, modern key value stores use log structure merge tree based, based data structure. It requires constantly merging multiple level of logs uh, as known as compactions which will incur high CPU cost and uh, write amplifications. Uh, so recently, both academia and the industry proposed uh, exposing the key value interface directly to the host instead of the traditional block interface um, and offloading the entire key to block mapping to the device as shown in the uh, right-hand side. So such device can greatly uh, remove the redundancy software layers and the interactions from key to file offset, offset to lo uh, logical block address and uh, logical block address to physical block address. Um, a little bit background for the data redundancy. So there are mainly two approaches. Uh, first is uh, replication, which simply maintain uh, multiple copies of the data in different devices. So such uh, approach will introduce lots of uh, storage overhead. And second is erasure coding. Um, so erasure coding, on the other hand, uh, encodes multiple data chunks or data blocks into code blocks and spread the, the data and the code uh, blocks into different devices. Erasure coding can greatly improve the storage efficiency. However, it requires high computation overhead. Uh, here are some related works of managing data redundancy for key value stores. Um, there are several works uh, discussing in-memory key value store redundancy. Um, they don't deal with persistency. Um, KVMD and the Stripe Finders are two closest work recently. Uh, KVMD proposed a hybrid scheme for managing redundancy on a key value device uh, based on the record size. It used uh, replication for smaller records and a splitting for large records and a packing for mid-sized records. So the packing approach actually solved a similar problem to us. However, uh, in their uh, approach, it requires uh, per data uh, per record uh, metadata object uh, and do in-place updates, which is uh, inefficient for update operations. 
Uh, Stripe Finder reduces the metadata overhead compared to KVMD. Uh, it requires less number of uh, metadata objects. However, it will incur even higher IO, uh, IO overheads uh, for update operations. Uh, I'll talk more details uh, for the comparison to the KVMD and the Stripe Finder in the later slides. Um, so uh, now let's uh, dive into the key designs of our work. So first problem is about uh, parity group formation, um, how to organize parity group and keep track of membership information within a parity group or erasure coding group, and then how to handle variable uh, record lines. So in our solution, we will predefine some fixed uh, coding size, we call them uh, slabs, and group uh, similar sized uh, records or objects together to form a parity group. To keep track of the, the parity group membership, we translate the, the logical keys to physical keys. Such way we can easily keep track of the membership uh, information from any um, records in a, in a parity group uh, while keeping the parity group dense. On the right-hand side, I'll demonstrate how it works. Um, when the right request comes, we will assign a physical key and group the records in a similar size into a, a parity group um, based on the request order. Um, and then we will write the data and the parity or codes uh, into different uh, key value device. Um, the read request will first consult the logical key to physical key mapping. And we'll use the physical key to retrieve the data in device. When rebuild happens, we can easily generate the physical keys for the entire parity group from any logical keys through the mapping table and decode the lost data after retrieving the, the data and the codes or parities from the individual device. Um, the second problem is how to optimize write amplifications. Um, as we know, when we do uh, mutate operations, uh, such as update or delete, we, we need to update both data and the parities objects uh, respectively. Um, so we propose uh, combining a batch write a lazy deletion and garbage collection together to reduce amplification. For batch write, we will wait for uh, all the data in a parity group together and issue data and the parity IOs in a batch instead of back and forth read and update uh, parity objects. Um, for update uh, requests, we will always write the updated data to a new parity group and uh, mark the stale objects to do GC in backgrounds. Uh, to do uh, GC stand for garbage collection. Um, we call this um, lazy deletion. Uh, the garbage collection will merge the close to empty group um, and copy the valid objects to form new parity group. Um, so this slide will demonstrate how lazy deletion and GC uh, can reduce the overall write amplification. So in this example, application make an update to a record um, replication or mirroring approach needs to needs three writes to update the record. Um, however, for KV rate, uh, if we merge two near empty groups um, together to form a new parity group, the amortized write is only 2.4. Uh, if we can merge uh, higher empty ratio groups together, we can save even more writes. Uh, here I'll walk through how the garbage collection works in details. So we will keep an inactive list for all the updated or removed records. When garbage collection kicks in, it will first find the close to empty uh, parity group, um, then copy the valid uh, objects from those groups uh, to new parity groups with some batch write. Then it needs to update the uh, logical to physical key uh, mappings uh, for the moved objects. And finally, the stale uh, parity groups can be deleted from the device and reclaim new space, uh, free space. Um, a great benefit for, uh, from the logical key to physical key mapping is that it can enable packing multiple logical records into a single physical records. Such way can help reduce the number of write IOs. Uh, this slide illustrates the performance benefit for packing. As we can see from the figure on the right-hand side, 
um, the write throughput almost uh, stay the same for smaller records from like 128 bytes uh, up to around 4,000 bytes. So in place, and another observation, observation is uh, in place updates for, for existing records actually incurs around 30% performance loss. Um, so proper packing and our out of place update approach can greatly benefit the overall write performance. Um, for metadata design uh, for the logical key to physical key mapping, we actually propose two ways to keep persistency. Um, for in-storage metadata, we use a small log structure merge tree based key value store to store the logical key to physical key mapping. Um, since uh, logical structure merge tree converts small KV pairs to large blocks called SS tables, we can split the SS tables and apply ratio coding um, to uh, maintain the redundancy for the metadata itself. For in-memory metadata, we can leverage the new technologies such as the Intel Optin DC and use in-memory data structures such as uh, hash tables to store the mapping table. For worst case scenario, we can still recover the mapping table by scanning all the physical keys uh, in the device uh, since we embedded the logical keys in the, in the value itself. Uh, compared to KVMD and Stripe Finder design, KVRate can reduce both object and IO amplification. So take uh, in-storage metadata as an example. For object amplifications, the log structure merge tree converts small logical key to physical key mappings to large blocks, SS tables, uh, which reduce the number of metadata objects in the device. For IO amplification, both KVMD and Stripe Finders require multiple steps uh, for an update. Take a KVMD as an example. When the record needs to be updated, KVMD needs to first read and update the record itself, and then read the metadata uh, objects uh, to get the keys for the metadata uh, for the parity records uh, in in this uh, uh, parity group. And finally, it needs to read and update the parity records. Similar with the Stripe Finder. It requires even more uh, IOs because um, it has a, 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 a pointer chasing structure for uh, getting the keys, uh, parity keys in the parity group. Uh, however, for our KV rate design, we will do out of place updates. The updated record will merge into a new parity group along with the new coming writes and the overall write got amortized as we saw in the previous slides. Uh, for evaluation, uh, we use YCSB to generate the workloads and we compare with RocksDB uh, with software rate on a block device. So the block SSD and the KV SSD in the experiments use the same hardware, but with different firmware. Uh, we evaluate a system with six devices, four for data, two for codes. We generate records um, in lengths between 400 to 4,000 bytes. Um, and generate uh, uh, update and get operations based on the fan uh, distribution. So performance-wise, KV rate can up, outperform RocksDB by a huge margin while keeping the low CPU cost. So this is due to traditional software KV stack um, has many layers of uh, software layers and interactions. Um, and also LSM tree requires a lot of write amplification due to the compactions. Um, within the KV rate optimizations, uh, the packing actually buy us around a 30% improvement for, for write. Um, for write amplification, for IO uh, amplification, our approach can reduce almost 10 times uh, IO amplification for update intensive workloads compared to KVMD and Stripe Finder. Uh, packing more records together can further reduce IOs uh, by the way, the KVMD and Stripe Finder cannot uh, uh, pack logical records uh, due to their design. Um, in case of write amplification, as we know, uh, LSM tree incur lots of uh, write amplification due to compactions. It incur even more write amplication when read is enabled. Our KV rate can reduce around 11 times write amplification compared to RocksDB. And we reduce um, write amplification by 2x compared to the in-place updates uh, approach, such as uh, KVMD. We also evaluate storage efficiency. 
KV rate can improve storage efficiency compared to RocksDB. This is because Rocks, RocksDB uh, write fabrication will lead to internal storage overhead in FTL layer. Um, in our paper, we we'll, we we'll point some uh, related works uh, also discussing this uh, phenomenon. Um, to summarize, we propose a erasure coding based uh, low write cost update friendly key value data redundancy scheme for the KV SSDs. Um, we build a software uh, prototype for validation and ev evaluation on real devices. Um, the biggest takeaway from this work is that uh, key value storage may not be uh, directly exposed to applications due to um, uh, high-end uh, high uh, functionality. Uh, for example, the data redundancy. It still requires some software layers to bridge between the device and the applications. Um, and we found the logical key remapping actually is a good idea since it can accomplish multiple jobs such as packing, erasure coding management in the same time. Um, thanks to our sponsors and the collaborators. And if you enjoy my talk, please take a look at our full paper and stop by for feedbacks and comments um, in the virtual events. Thank you. Thank you, Mian, for this great talk. So I see some questions being typed in the Slack channel, but meanwhile, I can start with one of the one clarification question I had. So in one of the slides, there was this point about metadata, metadata persistency and the possibility of using a recovery option in the, in the worst case. So I, I was concerned about the cost and overhead of this operation. It seemed like a very expensive operation because there would be a need to go through all entries in the in the SSDs. Could you elaborate on this, please? Yes. So uh, so in that bullet, uh, what I mean is basically if we separate the metadata and the the data between the memory and the storage, basically keeping the metadata in the in the memory, and if we lost them, we can still retrieve them retrieve them by scanning the uh, all the physical records in the device. But if we keep all the metadata in the uh, storage itself, uh, we can actually provide a redundancy to the metadata uh, also. So in that case, uh, we don't need to deal with this uh, uh, scanning and uh, recover the, the metadata uh, process. So as you said, yes, if we Hello, need- so, Sorry, go ahead. Uh, okay, so so bas basically, yeah, that's a, a heavy lifting process if you have to um, do that, yeah. And, and did you evaluate the overheads of such a full recovery mechanism? Um, no, to be honest, we didn't do that. We only evaluated um, like a single device point failure. So we actually don't uh, evaluate the, the whole process for ret Retrieve, uh, retrieving uh, all the keys uh, and uh, all the records from the device. That will be definitely um, heavy lifting because we, we did some experiments actually to retrieving all the keys. That itself also um, involve a lot of overhead because it's not like a, a, a block-based interface. You can uh, sequentially read the blocks. So they have some like internal complexities in, in the device itself. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for the clarification. So we have two more questions. I will go through them one by one. So Yitzhak, I have given you permission to talk on Zoom. Can you ask yeah. your questions directly? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, right amplification also depends on on how nicely things are grouped. If you have blocks that are almost entirely stale then clearing them, copying the, the non-stale data is easy. If, on the other hand, blocks become stale kind of randomly, then you will need to do a lot of uh, good data copying. And the question is whether your approach affects this either for the better or for the worse. Uh, so that's a great question. So um, actually there's two parts. So first one, um, since we are doing the key remappings, we are able to like pack uh, multiple uh, logical records together to group a larger um, like 4K or even larger uh, size for the entire physical records. In that case, that can do something to help with the internal uh, garbage collection inside the device, right? 
Um, but on the other hand, we don't have any like detailed information of how the device itself manage uh, the internal stuff because they have also they also required this problem of uh, how to manage the packing inside the device, how how they efficiently manage the garbage collection. Um, but I think, to my understanding, by removing a lot of the software interactions, um, the entire stack should have better. Um, write implication internally. Uh, what I'm saying is uh, internally to the, the flash chip itself, uh, but we don't have the numbers or evaluations for that because we don't have the, the internals for the, the firmware. So that's a, like a, a issue. So we can only like evaluating the uh, external uh, write implications from the host to the device. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, I think you can also quickly squeeze in one more question from Brian. Brian, are you here? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Hi. Uh, so actually, the previous question kind of answered uh, my question. So I, I was wondering about uh, the end-to-end -end, uh, write application. And, and um, I think you just mentioned that you weren't able to measure the um, anything that happens inside uh, what the firmware does. So um, mm -hmm. the the I application measured is just something external to the, to the KPSSD, right? Right, right. Okay, yeah. Okay. And I think uh, there should be more those kind of devices, like uh, something like open end channel SSD that provide the ability to expose some internals uh, or you can design your own firmware to the uh, SSD itself. In that case, I think it will be a better platform to evaluate the end to end mm -hmm. uh, write applications and IO stuff. That will be okay. more interesting. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so thank you very much, Mian, for the talk and for answering all the questions.